Okay. Speaking of uh, agendas, I think we mentioned we don't let agendas die. Uh, we're going to go through some agendas that are thriving and some agendas that are not. Summer League is a weekend. And you and I, I think we're in the minority in a lot of our takes before the NBA draft on players. Some of them look very good. Most of them look pretty bad. But let's start with the good. Uh, Keegan Murray Cart is a guy who you and I have been super high on. I think at times you and I said he is a top three player in this draft class. Uh, we were adamant that we were hopeful the Pistons would get him at five if he fell to us. He did not fall to us. But I did some Tim Duncan comparisons, mostly demeanor-wise. But I threw out, like, this man's just going to be a quiet 20-point-a-game killer who can hit step-back threes for 20 years. And he very much looks like he's going to be that. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been special. Like, the... You know, there was a there's a couple of people out there who were like that 40 percent that he shot from three at Iowa is not going to translate to the NBA. And not only does it look like it's going to translate, I mean, 40 percent might be the, the benchmark. Like he's he's probably going to find his way to like the 43, 44 range. He can really shoot the ball. I think he's shown some things off the dribble as well. Um, and he had that big moment where he had to get send the game into overtime against the King uh, against the Magic. Sorry about that. Um, so I think he's been as advertised. Uh, the athleticism is there. Uh, there's a lot of people that piled on you for the Tim Duncan esque demeanor kind of game comparison. It's not completely far off. It's really not like it's I, not like you can you can put a star on that one. I think if you watch him, the way he mentally and emotionally operates is Tim Duncan. It's just like if yes. Tim Duncan was raised in the three point era, like I think he's what Keegan Murray would look like. We'll see if he actually becomes that good, but uh, yeah, he he's already showing the clutch gene. I'm excited for the Kings. Weirdly. Like I know people want to like, make uh, jokes. No, no, you're no, no, you're not Greg. No, hear me out. Like people want to make jokes about like, Oh, they passed up Jaden Ivy, but like, that was a great pick for Sacramento. Jaden Ivy makes no sense with De'Aaron Fox and Davion Mitchell. And uh, like, say what you want about Fox and Mitchell. Fox is good. Mitchell could be good. And Keegan Murray is the perfect player at the perfect position of need for them in that front court. Like Sabonis, Mitchell, Fox, Murray is a squad. Like I'm very Harrison, excited. Is, to is Harrison that. Barnes or three? Harrison Barnes is there. Yeah. And I, they just got Malik Monk, Fox and Monk are back together. Big fan of when college stars that are friends get to play together in the league. Oh, are, are, are the Kings working their way into like sleepers, top five NBA teams we need to watch. I'm a Kings fan. Officially. I was going to be a Keegan Murray fan, wherever he goes. That's one of my sons, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm officially a Kings fan. We also had, I think some negative agendas that were correct on so far cart. We've been adamant that Max Christie stinks. And that looks true. You want to talk about that? I mean, like, he, he's been one of the worst players in summer league. Like, I don't think that's a stretch to say so. Um, same thing that he was doing at the Breslin Center is carrying over to the UNLV Thomas and Max Center. I mean, He's been able to get shots off, but it, it, they're not going in. They look fine, I guess. Like, I feel like we could do the same loop with Max Christie as far as, oh, there he goes, shooting again. Oh, form looks good. Ah, miss. Like, you know, I don't know. Not surprised by it. Seems like maybe he could have benefited from coming back. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a coach uh, that he played for last year tried to tell him that, and he didn't like the way it sounded. And mommy and daddy didn't like the way it sounded. So, you know, he's he's on the Lakers. He's a draft pick. He gets to play in the NBA. He's not playing well in the NBA. So I don't know. I'm not surprised. Uh, and I secretly am happy that this is happening. Oh, you're rooting against a Michigan State player actively? We just got you on. Not, no, 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 you no. Ha you just said you are happy Max Christie's playing poorly. I'm not rooting against them. Like, you if he just does good. said you're happy that he's playing poorly. Sometimes someone's got to give him tough love. It's That's not tough love. I'm, you're you're yeah, preying on a 19 year old kid's downfall is what you're doing. You're right. That's against my brand. And not, that. not only that, a 19 year old Spartan dog. Do Spartan dogs turn their backs on other Spartan dogs? I do turn my back on Spartan Bichon freezes. <laughs> 
I, we're going to clip that and I'm going to hold on to that forever. That can be held against you in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah, let's also be real. If Max Christie was great, y'all would be claiming the F out of him right now. Like, if he came out and oh, averaged 22 no. whoa, whoa, a game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all know the hell I would not. Yes, you would. No, 100, I wouldn't. 100%. Talking about, oh, Izzo, Izzo development. Oh, uh, like, no. Izzo so good. happy for Max. Now he's finally showing the, the flashes we saw in college. Like, but instead, he's bad. We knew he'd be bad, but you're happy he's bad. Like, really? No, you're not. Nobody's happy he's bad. Including Max, including Max's family, including Lakers fans, including Michigan. Nobody's happy. No, I'm not Max happy. He's, I'm not. I'm not happy he's bad because last year him being bad literally made our team bad. But all it is is confirming that he is bad. I wouldn't be happy if he was going off right now. Yeah, you would. You'd be taking victory I, laps. You would. You for sure would. You're, you're uh, I so I came up. I had to write the Field of sixty eight newsletter last week, and it was conveniently after Max Christie's debut. So I came up. Good with job. Good job on those. Good job on those. By the way. Thank you. G, I G with I, the pen. I came up with something I'm calling the Max Christie emotional cycle. Five stages. Stage one: excitement. Stage two: his shot looks good. It just doesn't go in. Stage three, oh, wait, it never goes in. Stage four, frustration. Stage five, wave the white flag. Right now, like, it's a week into his L.A. career, and Lakers fans are already in stage two. That's not boding well. Like, it took Michigan State fans, like, a month and a half to get past excitement phase into, like, eh, something might be wrong here phase. Lakers are already there. So, doesn't bode well for Max. Uh, And sadly, Cart, (laughs) that's really all we got right about this draft isn't it other than chat should we should we quickly hit on chat chat looks chat. great he's generational he doesn't and look like that. the best guy in this draft class though and that was i uh, uh, does he not i think it's a toss-up but I, your thing was kind of like he's clearly the best in this draft class right yeah and i still think he is hmm uh. That's interesting. He had one bad game. Like he had one game, he did nothing offensively. Paolo also had a bad game, by the way. Did he? Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know what? Actually, I don't care if I throw out a muscle on this reacher agenda. Oh no. This Paolo is made for summer league because he can, you know, be 6'10, 250 and go up and play against guys that might be like working prime day this Thursday. Like he he can overpower people that's just not going to happen and it's not going to happen in winning time it's not going to happen in the playoffs you're not going to be able to overpower people and that jumper still broke i still am all that that's a fact to me i think he had one good game but the jumper's broken i I, okay we're this is the portion where we now flip to uh summer league apologies this is where you should be apologizing about paolo he's not broke like he's very clearly he has a very smooth jumper he can pull up off the dribble he's hitting like carmelo anthony style post fades he's taking like seven of those a game they look great they're going in and you're still out here saying the man can't shoot which is pure insanity uh his shot looks better than jabari smith's right now that's not gonna last long but like i think it looks better Carrying an agenda that Paolo can't shoot is insane. Uh, and that's not even the biggest apology we should be making, but clearly you're not willing to go there on Paolo. Paolo also duck and smoke, which we're not commenting on either. We can comment on that. He is duck and smoke. He didn't want to play Chet. He was scared of Chet and he's out for the rest of summer league. Because he looks great though. Like, <laughs> okay. So he's not, so, he, so basically he's not Montrez Harrell. He's Julius Randle. He's way better than Julius Randle. He just is. His ceiling is Julius Randle. That's, again, insanely wrong. How are we supposed to do this segment where we apologize for things we've gotten wrong if <laughs> you're not even able to go there on your first one? I apologize. You said his ceiling's Julius Randle? Like that's I said I'm sorry for calling him Montrez Harrell. His ceiling is Julius Randle. Paolo's way better than that, dude. All right, let's.